On today's episode, well, there was something called a football game last night, so we break that down. A lot of injury news, the rest of the matchups, and a shame that you do not want to miss at the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, October 14th. The fantasy footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Back at it. More matchups to talk about. News and notes. Some depressing injuries that are changing uh, fantasy face-off lineups today. Mm -hmm. That's sad. Even sadder, that game last night. Ooh, it was brother. just a Thursday night again. <laughs> just had Thursday night on Amazon. The NFL somehow put that schedule together, and they're like, hey, uh, hey, Amazon, <laughs> check this out. I it's mean, really good. Give us a bajillion dollars. Somebody, somebody joked around that Amazon was the manager in the league taking all the garbage, <laughs> you know, in the trades. Right. I mean, if you're Amazon, you're just so bummed out. Now, we should have Are a better... We all watched it. Well, yeah. I mean, I I consumed all of their commercials. Yeah, but the the storyline in social <laughs> media is, uh, you know, it's that that you had to hold your eyes open to watch it again, and it, and you you begged for Indianapolis, Denver, Saints, Cardinals next week. It should, should be a lot better. Should be much better. Ravens, Let's hope. Buccaneers. After that, okay, there we go. All right, Eagles. Texans? Mm. Yeah, I mean, like no, I'll, I'll, I'll get some Eagles on there. Let's get at least one team scoring a bunch of points. You, you can't. Fal no. Falcons, Panthers? <laughs> well, that one's going to be a problem. Yeah, all right. You can't know a good game without knowing what a bad game Thank is. Thank you, Mike. Yes, that's what I tell myself on uh, my down fantasy football weeks. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, that's why, obviously, Mike didn't throw its football time in there. He knew what was coming. Eh, it was just a, it, when I have to enter the show, it's completely different. Yeah, you got to get your if you're nasty in there. And yeah. uh, the Deucers are here, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, and then we have uh, we got Papa Josh in the back. Oh, oh, what are, trying to, are you flexing? No, are no, you? no. That looked like more of a uh, <laughs> like, a, the, like a horn on a, yeah. a train. He wants it. He wants the or the a big, big rig. rig. He wants the eighteen wheeler to pull, but he's also just trying to get a little bicep going in there. I don't. Oh, know. There, oh, it is. Boy. Oh, there it is. Oh boy, that man curls fifteen pounds. You could hear that on the podcast. Yeah, the the. Muscles coming I can through. hear his bones crackling because he's so old. <laughs> he just had to. He couldn't leave it at. No, I could not. At a compliment. Uh, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday throughout the year, we say thank you to a supporter over at jointhefoot.com. By giving away a one hundred dollar gift card to Fantasy Champs, and uh, today's winner, uh, Nadine Rossbach. Did I say that remotely close to correct? I believe you said it one hundred percent perfectly. All right, congrats, Nadine. Thank you for supporting the show, Rossbach. Yes, Rossbach. It's kind of a cool last name. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Rock the Rossbach. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> it was in the back of my head too. Uh, jointhefoot.com is the community with the bonus weekly show access to Foot Clan HQ and all of the in-season tools. Uh, you get the, uh, the four person start sit tool as well. Extra it's, podcast. Yeah, it's good stuff. Tons of stuff. That's all good. of our new schedule adjusted defensive ranks will be going up today for, for the Foot Clan. So, uh, check that out. Foot Clan HQ. Uh, we have news to talk about, but first let's quickly reflect on yesterday's 12 to seven slog fest. Quickly. Quickly. Uh, Carson Wentz couldn't even throw for 100 passing yards. He looked awful. Uh, took three sacks, had a 66 rating. Justin Fields made, uh, I would say, two good passes this game. He is so bizarre. 
because so bizarre yes so bizarre yeah he's driving down the freeway <laughs> in his hot hot car like because he looks completely inept like yes. he has no idea what how to read a defense yeah and then the 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 next drive you're like holy crap that's a that's a good quarterback and then you're then you go right back to oh that guy has no idea what he's doing Great pass to Dante Pettis for the touchdown. That was uh, the one. And I, I would say a great pass at the end of the game to Darnell Mooney, who um, it was exactly the same consequence of the Devontae Adams uh, missed catch where he didn't get his feet in because he didn't corral it early in the catch. Yep, he bobbled If it. Mooney caught, like when I was watching the replay. Yeah, you thought it was a touchdown. Because I just assumed he had gained possession at the top of that. Because he, what a vertical from yeah. Darnell Mooney going up there. Didn't corral the ball until he was not in the end zone, and so they lost. And um, you know, the couple storylines that you can mention: uh, Khalil Herbert had a huge run, but the the problem there is uh, you had a massive snap advantage to to David Montgomery. You did. I but, mean, it was fifty six to sixteen. Yes, yes. I mean, but so you can't play Herbert. Is my point? You can't react to that and play Herbert. Totally. Uh, I'm not disagreeing, but I mean, how many if Ker Herbert had not ripped off a 64-yard run. He would have added eight snaps or so. Yeah, I mean they were giving they were giving him when he was on. He was getting drives because he, he after the 64-yard run, they still kept him on the field. I was shocked. Like I really expected David Montgomery to come in and, and close, and they gave him a couple more carries, and then got stonewalled on fourth and one. Uh, Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson was the other story. Robinson had uh, 17 carries for 60 yards and the late touchdown. Gibson had five carries for 35 yards, looked great on the drive they gave him. He was also returning kicks in this game, and so a lot of the storyline on Twitter was like... Trade him. Yeah, and it was, you know... You're speaking to the Manders. Yes. Not yes. to fantasy managers. No, You're no, saying, no. Oh, no, no, you, because you can't trade. Right. You yes. cannot trade Antonio Gibson for... For a bag of peanuts right now because he's just he's an insurance running back who is like not liked by his team but it's just it's frustrating to see when he gets an opportunity be incredible and then just please trade him you don't you don't Ron Rivera you don't like him trade him yeah and they they can probably do that yes. you know and and Gibson's one of the few players that might be better on that second team because uh, he does have the ability that, you know, he got in the doghouse with all these fumbles, you know, and, and it it's clear that they don't like him. This is exactly how I thought it would play out carry-wise. It's why I played Brian Robinson against you, Mike, yes. which I'm sure made you super happy when he got into the end zone. Yeah, the 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 scoring a touchdown because of Valus Jones' fumble, that felt a little bit bad, uh, but it, you, you can't deny the volume. Like, you, you were correct. Your process was sound that Brian Robinson – after the you know they were giving him the social media, well he's going to be the starter. He was the dude, and it, I mean, they the, despite the offense being horrifically oh, bad. Oh man, that was tough to being watch. Being inefficient, Brian Robinson just getting stuffed for two yard carries. They kept going to him over and over. He's going to be the guy. Yeah, I think I think rest of season you you're going to get 15 plus opportunities. Goal lines goal line will be all Brian Robinson yeah. if they ever get there. And uh, that's where we're at. Anybody else uh, that you want to talk about in this game? No, I mean, all the Seven wide for receivers. for 68 for yeah, Mooney. That was the, 12 that's, targets. That's the one guy I wanted to talk about was it's it has gotten better over the last couple of weeks for Darnell Mooney. We're not, I don't know that we're in the range of you're excited to start him in a 12-person league. Maybe in a 14-teamer, he's coming in as a double flex or so. But it, at least we are – we're we're trending to a better path here for Darno Mooney, and there's still a lot of football left. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anything else, Jason? Uh, not not really. Justin Fields should just run the ball every time he snaps it. That's what I sure. think. And, and he had look, he threw 27 times. They let him throw it a little bit more. He ran more than he has been. Was okay for uh, fantasy because of his rushing. Okay, let's move on. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jason, what's mm. going on with Tyler Lockett? Well, Tyler Lockett was added to the injury report Thursday with a hamstring injury. That is a bad day to be added to the injury report. Unfortunately, uh, Thor, Thor related? 
Thor related? That's what the, the Thursday it comes from Thor. Oh yeah, okay, okay. And th- I don't know. I was just trying to get education. Try- yeah, thank you uh, for that education, Mike. Um, I know that both Andy and myself oh, we so shared confused. we shared afterwards that uh, Tyler Lockett was in our DraftKings lineup. We had to make the pivot, and you have to make the pivot if you have Tyler Lockett and you're going. Oh man, that that stinks. I'm sad to hear he's added. I, I I I'm still planning on hopefully playing him. No, you're not. No, you're not. When when a player gets added on Thursday for hamstring, they ain't playing. If they had a full practice today and and all the talk was good, would you feel feel uh, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, if he practices in full and he comes out or they come out and say, yeah, it's not a problem, then, then I'd be then like, oh, all right. then I would be like, okay. But historically speaking, that means that the player is injured with a hamstring injury days before they're playing football. Yeah, and, and you know, when you look at that situation in Seattle, Byron Murphy, the Cardinals' number one cornerback, it's been a really good run for him against number one receivers. It has. Cooper Cup uh, didn't do a lot against Byron Murphy. A.J. Brown last week didn't do a lot against Byron Murphy. So you were really looking at Lockett as the player that was going to take advantage of this Cardinals defense in it, Seattle it's been great for the second wide receivers yes it has against Arizona so um you know if Lockett were to miss this game oh man I think in that situation you start to glance at some tight ends with Geno Smith uh, as options you know Noah Fant was not bad last week Will Disley has been getting into the end zone but Fant has had more volume um but yeah Jason and I were both sad because Lockett was very inexpensive on DraftKings James Connor is expected to miss week six, that same game. Could miss additional time. Eno Benjamin, still rostered in 67% of, uh, only rostered in 67% of leagues. He is a must start yeah. this week. Pick yeah. him up. Uh, Daryl Williams will miss this game. Jonathan Ward will miss this game. They picked up two guys off the street to just have bodies there. This will be Eno Benjamin uh, having the vast majority of snaps, targets, routes run, carries. It is a great play. Yeah, I don't think those practice squad guys will be on the active roster. They're going to be Keontae Ingram, yeah, and, that's, and that's it. Yep. Raheem Mostert returned to a limited practice on Thursday, said he's fine. Okay, well, I, the quote... Did he wink, though? Yeah. Or was it no wink? We do. We have the word fine in quotations. I w- like, <laughs> Why is it in quotes? Does it make I, you feel bad? I think it needs to be in capitals. I think it becomes... I imagine it's because it's direct from the source, but the problem with that word is... So much of the inflection of the voice. Yeah, I'm fine. I, that person's not okay. Now, if you, oh uh, no, I'm fine. Yeah, that person's good to go. We should have had the clip. Hmm. Yeah, and putting it in the quotes makes it sound like <laughs> I'm fine. like he put quotes up when he <laughs> yeah, said exactly. it. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> well, uh, anyways, he's uh, he should play. I mean, they gave him a rest day. Yeah, uh, he's, it he's seems. Fine. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, they are one of the early games, so you're going to know good. if you need to pivot. Keenan Allen limited on Thursday. Uh, the Chargers didn't actually practice, though. They play Monday Night Football. I mean, you are unless you're like doing oh, the Josh man. Palmer pivot. Is Palmer okay? I think Palmer's okay. Yeah. All right. Unless that's the world you want to live in, don't. You've got to just wait a week. And I, don't Mike, do has done the prime time Keenan oh. Allen wishes and hopes and dreams, and it hasn't worked out. He will tell you to play him. Yeah. So. Just bench him and this he'll be week. Wrong. Bench him no matter what, and start a different player. What if he says, "Don't play me," and, and then I they will. put him in there? Are you going forward? No, I'm going to listen to him. Okay, <laughs> all right. Either way, <laughs> uh, Saquon Barkley, Wandale Robinson, Kadarius Tony, uh, Tony and Kenny Galladay aren't going to play. Wandale could get out there. He's been limited, but Ooh. you just you just never believe it right now until you get an active on Sunday and you're not playing him in week one. I would completely agree, and I would completely be picking up Wandale Robinson. Yeah, The opportunity there for this rookie to come in and be the target leader as soon as he's on the field is Pro- as easy a path as any player could possibly have. Yeah, the Giants right now are having to throw the ball to Darius Slayton who they have like an Antonio Gibson style yeah, hate wa- for. They wanted him off the roster. And they're like, Mwah. all right, target him. Uh, wow, that sounded like uh, Dave Gettleman was back. In- it's me, Dave. <laughs> Saquon Barkley was limited, but no concerns for Matthew Betts on this one. He'll play. Rashad Bateman sidelined. Also, Ronnie Stanley sidelined again for the Ravens. So I don't think Bateman's going to be out there this week, and that stinks. Because I know a lot of people are waiting for him to get back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we we've had incredible Lamar throughout this season, but we've had two kind of lower output games. No Bateman. No Bateman. 
No, you can feel it when you when you're out there. It's like Duvernay, Andrews, and uh, let's figure this out, Lamar. So, uh, I, another player not in. Uh, I don't see him on here. We need to mention him. Chris Olave has been progressing well through the concussion protocol in New Orleans. Today will be a big day, but um, he was already on stage uh, stage three. Three, yeah, yeah. And then the Patriots did sign Kevin Harris, a running back, a uh, seemingly roster based confirmation that Damian Harris will miss. But they got his brother Kevin. Oh, I see what you did there. You know, where yeah, uh, last name's the same. Right? You, you, you were not on, they have to be siblings. They, you were not on the, the show, Andy. So I want to know where you weigh in. Yes, Ramondre Seasonson. I thought they were both so Ramondre stu- so Steven stupid. Season. Okay, so you were with me. Yeah, they were both dumb. Yeah, oh. I completely agree. By they the were... way, thank you guys for covering for me yesterday. I had to play dad. Yep. Had a eleven year old with your, a. How'd your doing your role? I I was pretty good. I got the x-rays taken care of for the 11-year-old. Nice. Not a broken ankle. They believed it? Um, They believed you were the dad? They did believe I was the father. (laughs) And um, also, I just wanted to say thanks for covering for me and stealing my start of the week. My start of the week, Ramondre Stevenson. And uh, yeah, yeah, Stevenson. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, You've got a good one. So your vote is neither. Neither, yeah. Mm. I still like going back to the round, like round mound of... Well, I don't remember what it was now. Yeah, Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, the old uh, Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. Or but, maybe nothing. But he is felt now. I guess if I had to pick between the two, it would definitely be uh, Steven season. Okay. All yeah. Right. So I, I should have just weighed in with my favorite. You should have. Sorry about Instead, you demeaning told us you both. To get off of your lawn. Well, you started with season sin, and it was so overwhelmingly dumb to me that the other one was washed out. And I think Steven season is okay. Okay. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy forecast. Now, Al Borland did have a, another entry into the Ramondre sweepstakes here. Al, do you uh, you want to contribute this? Ramondre. Oh, okay. Like a, uh, like a like, man. Oh, like, I don't think you said it right. Try mean, it again. Ramandre. Nope, still bad. That uh, you gotta okay. go. Like, Ramandre. That, that's what I, mean? I messed up. The got, problem is Debo we, Samuel. No, the problem is Mandrews. Oh, there's too many man puns. You did you guys have, have a one. thought on the two dumb ones from yesterday? Yeah, they weighed in. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Stevenson, Steven season. Okay, all right. And we won't ask Josh. All right. <laughs> Yesterday, these guys covered the 49ers, Falcons, Patriots, Browns, Jets, Packers, Jags, Colts, Vikings, Dolphins, Ravens, Giants. Now, you didn't uh, take any more liberties and like throw an almost upset out there for me and just lock me into it? Not yet, but I'm planning on doing it today. Oh, even with me here? Yes. Okay. No, I, ex- I threw it in for the 49ers, Falcons, so good luck. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals at 2-3 and three take on the New Orleans Saints, who are 2-3. and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cincinnati minus two on the road. Why not get it out of the way? Andy's almost upset of the week. I mean, the the line is very close. Yeah. So if you need me to add a little something to it, I think the Saints win by more than three points. Let's put it that way. Ooh. Okay. I don't like what's going on in Cincinnati right now. Now, they might figure it out. Like, that's the default, right? We say that about certain teams. We say that about... The Rams offense, they'll figure it out. Cardinals after Hopkins, they'll figure it out. Well, the Bengals have too many good players, but we might not have one of them in this game, and it didn't look that great without T. Higgins on the field on offense. So I think Cincinnati going to New Orleans, a good defense. New Orleans getting a ton of, uh, you know, they, they could probably get Winston back this week. You've got Kamara back. Yeah, he looks Olave great. looks like he's likely going to play. I don't know. Do you guys disagree? Agree? No, I don't disagree. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup. Going to a harsh environment in New Orleans, it's a difficult uh, place to play, and the Bengals' offense has been struggling. The The only place I, I disagree <clears throat> on just calling the upset and saying uh, you know, the Saints win by three is the fact that the Saints' offense is not at full strength. They haven't looked great. And the Bengals' defense is fully legitimate. Yes. So while the Bengals, I mean, this is a this is two two good defenses with two struggling offenses. That's how I see this game. So then, do you uh, have a kind of lower view of these offensive pieces in this game? The uh, so not really because there's a, a consolidation of 
uh, where the ball goes. So even with when you aren't super hopeful for a barn burner, you're not going to not play Jamar Chase. You're not going to not play Joe Mixon. You're not going to not play Alvin Kamara. And if Chris Olave is there, Michael Thomas and Landry won't be. Ooh. 29 opportunities for Kamara, uh, Kamara last week. Yeah, he was great with them. He looked great. He was efficient. He was fantastic. He just got Taysom Hilled. Do you worry about uh, Winston's return lowering his uh, receiving volume? You know, that's been something that has been a problem at times. No, no, okay. I, I, I don't. I think Alvin Kamara is fine. So, I mean, this is, to me, it's, while it's not the most fun game and I don't expect the biggest things, there's not a ton of questions. I would say the the questionable players would be Joe Burrow. Would you, would you, are you benching Joe Burrow against the Saints? Are you... You Solid, know. not spectacular this year. QB 6, 15, 5, 11, and 8. Would you prefer Burrow or Herbert rest of season? Herbert. He, oh, man. I, that's very close. I guess Herbert, but not by a ton. How about this week, Joe Burrow in this matchup or Aaron Rodgers against the New York Jets at home? Yeah, I. I th Rodgers feels safer for his floor. And I mean, the Andy's right. the 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 lack of T. Higgins last week, when he was you know wink wink active, it was a really big deal. Or it, it they, seemed like like it, yeah. they couldn't get they could not get the offense going, and they should have been able to in that matchup. One of the signs of a struggling offense is that you turn Hayden Hurst into a talking point on a fantasy football show. <laughs> Like right. Tyler Higby for the Rams. You want a sign of a struggling you offense, you there turn you go. a mediocre tight end into one of your most important targets. <laughs> that That is a sign that maybe you want Hayden Hurst's name never to be mentioned on this show. And that means you're doing things down the field. Jamar Chase is, is working out. So uh, I guess I'm a little bit hesitant. I'd go Rodgers in that situation. Joe Mixon. Look, I, I, it's been a rubber meets the road situation for me in fantasy leagues of whether to trade for him. I have gotten to the point of clicking all the players into the trade and go to click the button, and then I've done a little double take. I'm like, I know he's a one, but is he a one, this offense? Yeah. So, you know, Mixon, you're going to play Joe Mixon because you, you drafted him to play him, and he, and he has a ton of opportunity, but he's giving, he's Najee Harris from last year right now. Whereas okay. It's just is he's getting along. That was a pretty good Najee. Yeah, I but like volume wise, I'm saying he like Joe Mixon in efficiency, and just watching him, you're like, what? last week was was better, but for the first month of the season, he just the, the he has not looked great. He has not looked as explosive as you would hoped. And one and, touchdown. And the offensive line is killing you. Yeah, one touchdown in five yeah. weeks for Joe Mixon. That's what you're feeling. If he scores a couple of those other weeks, he's got nice nice games. T. Higgins remains sideline on Thursday's practice. We mentioned it's not – like, Mike, are you at this point on Friday, you've got a pretty deep team with options at wide receiver. Is this a – I'm not playing him no matter what happens the rest of this week? Unless I get a full practice today. Okay. Like, even if it's limited, I will probably I, – I, I have the luxury that I have a, some players I can put in. So I get it. You might be forced to just risk it and go with T. Higgins, but – he is extremely scary because even if they say he's active, you this could be an active where he's just on the sideline the whole time. That's the worry for me. I mean, we saw him, he was active last week, and not really. You know, uh, I I can't imagine being. What if confident. he says he's fine in quotes? <laughs> um, if he's doing the air quotes, certainly bench him. <laughs> but you know, if I've got like here's a here's a brutal name, DJ Moore. I would start DJ Moore over T Higgins. It, that that's kind of how far down probably. I would go. Uh, you know, Alec Pierce, even like these players that you're not trying to put in your lineup, but if you've got guys that are getting targets that aren't hurt, that aren't hurt, I would play them over the guy that's hurt and might be on the sideline active for a game. Would you flex uh, Taysom Hill over T Higgins this week? If Higgins was active. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. So talk to me about Taysom Hill, Jason, because you already know that uh, my arch rival sitting across the table from me, uh, I'm going to play Taysom against him. Yeah, I mean, Taysom has a baseline of about three points. He's got five guaranteed carries, and you're hoping for ten carries. But if you're talking touchdown upside, there is 
a really strong chance Taysom Hill gets in the end zone because he's very good at that. His upside we saw last week, so the you know he's he can do things that other tight ends or other we'll just call it players since sure. he's not a tight end uh, can't do. Only Nick Chubb, Jalen Hurts, and Jamal Williams have more rushing touchdowns than Taysom Hill. What if what if you created a new category and he was just goal line running back? So what? Uh, where would you play him as a running back? No, in your goal line running back spot. Oh. Oh, we okay. just we just add that to fantasy football. Uh, I see. It'd be and, a great uh, play. You only count those players if they take a carry outside the ten. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Mm. Lindale White wants back into the fantasy and, football. Uh, what? Who was on the Bears? Oh, that was of, yeah. From, from I remember Matt that Forte. from Matt Forte. Oh, oh boy, that's on the tip of my tongue I too. See Mac. Oh man, shoot! No. Should have brought it up. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, well, that's on gonna you. Bother me a lot. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with more matchups. Yeah, you're gonna have to find that, Jason. I'm on it. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers now three and two take on the troubled Pittsburgh. Michael Bush. Yeah, that's yeah, the guy. <laughs> thank the guy. you. Oh, whew. That was, I was not going to pay attention to another thing on this episode until I figured that <laughs> thank out. Thank you. Yeah, Michael Bush. Uh, who also played for the Raiders for a while, right? I think so. Yeah. I believe that's right. The Buccaneers 3-2 and two, taking on the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers who are sitting at 1-4. and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Buccaneers minus 8.5. The over-under is 45.5. Uh you know, things are looking up for Tampa Bay's offense. Godwin got a rest day this week, but he's healthy. Mike Evans wow. has been playing well. <laughs> okay. I mean, I fully... I, I heard what I you heard. heard it, okay. <laughs> all right. We all heard it. I was like, I Godwin a, got arrested. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I yep. mean, that got is, a rest day versus got arrested. Well, it's yeah. just the way you the, the way you combine the words, it sounded like you definitely were going to say he got arrested. Mm. And I thought you were breaking news that I had <laughs> no, not heard. It was, it was scary just to me. Casual. Godwin got arrested. I was like, I did not hear this news. That didn't not happen. Okay. Whew. Godwin did not get arrested. He got a rest day. Okay. okay. Much better. Feel better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mike started the week, Tom Brady. Look, Pittsburgh's given up big plays. You've got players like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They can take advantage. You've got the dump truck. Oh. Leonard Fournette with 10 receptions last week. He's got dumps like a truck. Dumps like a truck. There it is. Truck, truck, guys like what, what. <laughs> Somehow I feel like that drops is going to get like a second longer every single time, and we'll get the whole song eventually. So those players, no questions around starting them, right? The Tampa side, pretty simple. Yeah. What about Kate Otten, the uh, tight no. end who – okay. And here's why. Uh, I had Kate Otten in our lineup for today. So did I, and, and I, he's not anymore. And he's not anymore in mine because Cameron Brait uh, was – fully back to practice and should be active from the concussion protocol. I do think that there's an opportunity for Otten, though, because Cameron Bray has turned into a two-for-21 player over the last handful of years. They made a depth chart change. Did they? Yeah, they did. So I do think Kate Otten will run ahead of Cameron Bray, uh, but Cameron Bray being active will take a little bit away, and Kate Otten is still a rookie tight end. You just cannot bank sure. on well, rookie tight ends. And if, like, if Cameron Bray is taken in two-for-20, if you are hoping that you get four for 45 fifth, yeah, and a touchdown from if you, Otten. If you remove 20 yards, it's no good. The Steelers defense, 28th against quarterbacks, 32nd against wideouts. So start your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. And to me, this is kind of a – like if Pittsburgh at home in this matchup gets trounced, which, look, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buccaneers minus eight and a half. It is the likely outcome. If that happens at home, I mean, this is not the Steelers that we've known nope. anymore. Uh, Kenny Pickett, nope. no touch, no passing touchdowns in one and a half, uh, one and a half games played. Najee Harris, he's not an auto start anymore. He, he is not this week, especially. I I would say anymore. You could say he's not an auto start. He needs to be in consideration. But this week, there Eno, are no. Yeah, I would play yeah. Eno over him in a Melvin Gordon. Question. Yep. Yep. In my dynasty, Brian Robinson last night on my dynasty. <laughs> yeah, if you could, if you can retroactively put yeah. the points, in, it'd be good. In my dynasty squad, I will be playing AJ Dillon and Clyde 
Edwards Alaire over Najee Harris. Yeah, I mean Najee Harris, just like we all saw coming. So the, the th- we've talked about his foot problems, his inefficiency. They might get Jalen Warren a little bit more involved, maybe to give him rest and also to have a, a little bit more explosive of a player right now. And he is not the better player over Najee. I think Najee is injured, but this is a matchup against the Buccaneers, who just shut down the running back yes. position. They shut it down through the air, which he's not even getting that many targets anyways. And they shut it down on the ground. He's already been efficient, and this isn't just like. Like, oh, last year, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers shut down the running back. This year, they shut down the running back. You just for schedule, they shut down the running back. Najee's been bad already, so he is not someone that you have to start. I would start. Is he a, a forced bench? Because he's, his, a, he's had no ceiling, so. I don't think he's a forced bench. Uh, Devin Singletary, I would play uh, ahead of him. Here, here's some names where I would say you've got a question. Okay. Um, this is going to be helpful for people because they – they need the courage. If you have the Jacksonville Jaguar duo, either one, James Robinson or Travis Etienne. I'd go Najee. I would go Najee. I wouldn't go Najee over James Robinson. No, okay, I'd play so, Robinson. So that's uh, that's a little close. What about um, Ezekiel Elliott kind of finding himself in a similar position against the Philadelphia Eagles? He's been inefficient, and he's in a bad matchup. I would play Zeke. Yeah, I guess I, I lean I Zeke. Would, yeah. I would as well. Uh, Deontay Johnson did have 13 targets last week. They they seem like they're going to be underdogs for a lot of these games moving forward. Uh, I don't think you have to bench Deontay Johnson. I think George Pickens is a dart throw. I would have been in on Fryermuth. You know, the uh, Buccaneers giving up almost 13 fantasy points a game, but he's still going through the concussion protocol. And with with Kenny Pickett, I think I'm looking elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality is it would have been so nice to play against Tampa. You can try Zach Gentry um, if you are, you know, making a DFS lineup or something because he was okay in, in relief and the matchup is there. And you would expect in this game that they're going to have to throw the ball a lot just like they did last week. It is an early game, so you would know at the least that Muth is active. And, and, and if, he, I mean, if he's active – then what are you putting him in? Yeah, okay. yeah, I would I would play Friar Muth if he's active. I, Over Hurst? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, I I would be just because shocked. Tampa gives it up to the tight end. Beca- what yeah. about uh, Big Bob Tunyon? Oh, definitely over okay. Tunyon. Um, I I would be shocked if Friar Muth plays. Shocked. Okay. Yeah, with his history of concussions. Yeah, and he's limited right now. He's not full participant, so I I can't see that happening. The Carolina Panthers. <clears throat> Sorry, the train wreck Carolina Panthers at one and four take on the two and three Los Angeles Rams. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Rams minus ten at home. The over under is forty one and a half. Wow, that gives the Panthers uh, less than sixteen points. They're giving the Rams ten. I would bet the Rams in this game. Oh, I'm, at, I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm not saying the like the the victor, but you would give ten points. I would. I would. I, I think Carolina. I think is going to be a just get right game in every way, shape, and form for the Los Angeles Rams. Matt Rule is at home. P.J. Walker is going to start. Um, you know, I just don't see how Carolina scores. I don't. I would agree with that. I mean, it's going to be tough sledding for the Carolina offense against this very good Rams defense. But I also think that the offensive line woes that the Rams have had on certain matchups is is exploitable here. The Carolina Panthers front seven, they they generate pressure, and I think they're going to put Sta- Stafford on his back quite a bit. So you would take the points with them? I would take the points. I did take okay. the points, um, but I I think it's going to be a, a low-scoring game where obviously we, we know Cooper Cup is just in. Higby is in. No one else? Crit- yes. Well, I mean, on that side of the ball, no one else. I'm not starting Cam Akers or Daryl Henderson against this front seven. Uh, sure, you might get a touchdown, get lucky, get bailed out, but you can't project a good stat line. And then on the other side of the ball, you got Christian McCaffrey, obviously good. And you're crossing your fingers. You're hoping that DJ Moore can show up with PJ Walker like he had in one of his starts, but yeah. he's not going to. You got Jalen Ramsey over the, there. And the, PJ Walker, 167 passing yards, no touchdowns in his start last week against Arizona, or last year against Arizona. Yeah, the. I'm making no road bets on P.J. Walker when it comes to the wideouts. Yeah, totally understand. But the thing to point out is the Rams are – they've been giving points to the fantasy wide receivers, currently 28, 34 and a half points per game to that position. So it's it's not a – it doesn't feel like a complete impossibility that the team 
rallies with the firing of the old coach. You see that from – you get a game or two burst sometimes from these teams. So I I don't know that I have true confidence putting DJ Moore in, but it certainly could happen. Yeah, and uh, if you want to look at the schedule adjusted for the Rams defense – they are 28th best against wide receivers. They have been giving it up to wide receivers while shutting down. They're number one against running backs, yeah, top so 10 against quarterbacks and tight ends. The wide receiver. Funnel. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, and passing has been a real problem That's for saying. Carolina. I'm not, it's... I'd be funneling it to the pass, too, against them. <laughs> Arizona, 2-3, and three, taking on the 2-3 and three Seattle Seahawks. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cardinals minus two. On the road, over-under is 50.5 points. Um, on a per drive basis, you have two defenses that have not been very good. Seattle giving up the most yards per play, most points per drive, second most expected, expected points per pass, Arizona allowing the highest pass success rate and second most points per drive. You know, this is one of those games over a 50 point over under that on paper, you just expect big things. It's a divisional matchup. The other two division mates, San Francisco and, and Los Angeles, I think are kind of locks to win this week. So this one's really important for these two teams to stay in contention in the division. It, am, am I missing anything here? Is, is there anybody that, you know, we talked about Eno Benjamin taking over at running back for the Cardinals, being in your lineup. Kenneth Walker gets his chance on the other side, Jason. Yeah. What, what do you see from this matchup? Ken Walker is a great start. He's uh, I, I know, uh, Andy, you've picked up DJ Dallas uh, everywhere, every league that I've seen you in, and you believe that they will uh, give him some work. I'm looking Are you at, seeing the uh, profile photo uh, of DJ I, Dallas? I've seen the profile photo of DJ Dallas, and it's, he's got them crazy eyes on. It's a, it's a good time if you have not seen it. It is a man of in. Intensity. Oh man, that camera melted. That camera after this photograph. I feel my soul. St I can't look. I like can't a, look at it anymore. I am terrified. He looks right like now. a man who, like a rat, scurried onto the camera right before the picture was taken. Oh, you're going. Fierce. He's afraid. I think he's afraid. Oh, I'm this man. I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh, you think he's giving you a, a stare down? Yes. I think he wins. He wins. He's here's all of my money. <laughs> you can you can have That's it. That's an intense man. Woo. He, I mean, he's got blade hands, right? Like just, <laughs> uh, you gotta. We gotta tweet that out, um, because uh, Andy. Now that we've seen how intense, uh, Nate, do you believe me that he's gonna DJ be involved? Dallas yeah. is. Does that make you want to start him? Uh, no, no. Okay, but I, I think if you're in a look at the beginning of this week, there were question marks around Jonathan Taylor. I think he's gonna play. Raheem Mostert. I think he's gonna play. You know, you need an emergency pivot. I think DJ Dallas gets ten plus opportunities in this game. They just do that. They don't. They're not going to give. Like even when they have a veteran, they give other players opportunities. Travis Homer has had them. DJ Dallas has had them. You've got a rookie in Kenneth Walker, so you, you're going to work in some veteran uh, running backs. So and the Cardinals, you know, are exploitable as a team. So you know, DK Metcalf is a lock for your lineup. Lockett is the problem right now because you don't. You know, you don't know if he's going to be 100%. We're waiting for some more injury reports. And it's a good time to remind you, like, there's a reason we have an Injury Blitz podcast that comes out Friday afternoons for Matthew Batts, our injury expert, over at jointhefoot.com, is because, you know, we're doing this show Friday morning. There's going to be practice reports today and information that comes out, and we want you as prepared as possible. Like T. Higgins returning to practice today. Yeah, we don't know if it's limited or full yeah, we yet. we don't, but I... He returned for today's walkthrough so far is what uh yeah. is that what you're seeing, Bruxy? Yeah. I think right. it's I oh, think it's yeah. still a trap. It could be. But like I said, I think uh, you know, you'd brought up Fryermuth. Would you play Noah Fant or Fryermuth? I if Fryermuth plays, I would play Fryermuth. I, I do agree too. that the uh, the Cardinals are beatable at tight end and uh, uh, you know, Fant, the problem with Fant is that it could be Disley. Right. Or it could be someone else like they they run three tight ends out there and yeah I, I don't want to play that game so I would uh, honestly I would go either one of the Pittsburgh I would go Gentry um if Friar Muth is out start of the week Hollywood Brown start of the week Zach Ertz in your lineup Hollywood Brown on a streak of four consecutive games with 10 or more targets and Seattle loves to give up the big play you might finally see the over the top Hollywood Brown 
you know, middle of the field, long touchdown Where in this game. Where he catches it. Yeah, that's the, you know. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's part two. And then Rondell Moore, Mike. He's, uh, he's you mentioned him. A lot of targets last week. Yeah, he, he he got to move back into the slot where that's his natural role on a football field. Eight targets, seven for 68. He, uh, this isn't like a, a calling for a big massive game here from Rondell, but he is he is a usable player this week. All right, I think we might need the party lights for this one. Buffalo, 4-1, oh, and one, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 4-1. and one. The over-under is 54 points from DraftKings. Uh, that's got to be the highest of the year so far. Bills minus 2.5 on the road. It's going to be nice. Come on. Right? Come on. It's got to be. <laughs> By the way, this is the first regular season start of Patrick Mahomes' career ever that he is a home underdog. And and it's uh, honestly when I saw the line at minus two and a half, I was surprised it was that I'm a little surprised. low. Oh, I think it's I think it's a little bit high. Uh, sure, I mean this this is going to be great. I'm so happy that this is in Kansas City uh, because with the with the crowd there, if you get off to a, a bad a slow start, just like they did against uh, the Raiders last week, they're they're going to get it going. I don't think as good as the Buffalo Bills defense is, and it's great at home with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, they're going to be able to score on them. Well, and it's a you know. They've had just some amazing games, these two teams. Uh, last week, or last year in week eight, you had a 38-20 to 20 Buffalo victory in Arrowhead. You had the playoff game. Oh, the playoffs. I that mean, was outrageous. Gabe Davis salivating at the opportunity. So, let's go. Josh yeah. Allen, Patrick Mahomes, we don't need to talk about them. Nope, they're in. They're going to be playing for you. The running backs, Clyde, he has earned himself an auto start position right now, although last week was his first kind of down week. Well, yes, you you got hit. because Clyde Edwards-Alaire has been, it's like the opposite Joe Mixon where he's being supported by touchdowns. So it fell apart last week, but it wasn't because he, he wasn't close. Like Clyde Edwards-Alaire went down on the one, and then I don't remember who got the touchdown after that, but Kelsey. Was it? It was probably oh, yeah. always four, Kelsey. It was probably Travis Kelsey. Uh, He's their goal line tight end. <laughs> but but it's 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 a sketchy and scary play to to put Clyde in there. But I do think that he is like. He's that RB2-3, but has upside every week because of touchdowns. Yeah, McKinnon did lead the backfield in playing time on Monday Night Football. That's been the norm, too. Devin Singletary is the weir one of the weirdest players in fantasy football. He mm -hmm. really is because um to me he kind of he lives in this place of if they need him, he will perform well. But sometimes they don't need him. Right. So it's never at his own like inefficiency, it's never because like they want to throw him the ball 12 times so catch uh, them all. Like it it's just sometimes they say, "No, we're going to opt out of Devin." And I don't, you know, I did it scare you at all that James Cook had a nice performance last week? No, not at all. That was that that came when you know, they in the second half when they were already the beatdown was over. Uh, Josh Allen was benched again. I mean, that's just what happens, and that's where you see. So you've got three games where Devin Singletary is in the fifty percent snap count range. It's a blowout against the Rams, a blowout against the Titans, and a blowout against the Steelers. I mean, you're talking absolute massacres. Then you've got the game that lost in Miami. Devin Singletary was on the field. 73% of the snaps was the running back six. And Baltimore, that was a close game. They only won by three. He was on the field for 88% of the snaps. This is a two-and-a-half-point game uh, from the DK Sportsbook line. This is a game where I want Devin Singletary in my lineups because he catches the ball. They run so many plays. The over-under at 54, if he is playing 70% of these snaps, I don't think he has a bad fantasy game. Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs, both in your lineup. Yep. And then you're looking at kind of those peripheral options. Can you find value with McKenzie returning from concussion protocol? I think so. Khalil Shakir, if he's not returned? Uh, yes. Well, either. And then Dawson Knox could make his return. It sounds like McKenzie has cleared the concussion protocol, which would put him back in, and then I would be playing McKenzie, Agreed. especially this week. And then uh, Juju, MVS, Sky Moore, McCole Hardman Man. against a defense that's fifth in total points given up to opposing fantasy wide receivers. They all feel too – it's just too random. It, it is. It is definitely and random. None of them are good. Especially for your, for your redraft league. Um, 
But uh, honestly, if you have MVS or Juju, like th- the Chiefs are going to have to put up points. This isn't they can you know just kind of sit back. They, they can't just sit back, have score a couple touchdowns, and then relax for the rest of the game. They're going to have to keep pace with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I prefer MVS. He was the wide receiver twenty last week. He's been running. He's been on the field the most. He's been running the most routes. He's so it's, much more athletic. It's not. It's you don't feel great. You Romeo Dubs do feel great. Okay, Dobbs. or MBS. Dobbs. What did I say? Dubs. Oh, yeah. I've gotten is... back into a Dubs habit. Yeah. Romeo Dobbs or MBS. Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs or Juju. Dobbs. 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 I mean, it's just you. You don't want in on this fifty-four point over under. Um, Dobbs. I do want in on the fifty-four point over under, but I I don't think we don't know if Juju wants in on it. <laughs> right. We don't that's... know if MBS wants in on it. That's true. We don't. <laughs> you, don't I, they feel like the three wide receivers most likely to run into each other in the middle of the field? Like, isn't it possible that MVS, Juju, and Hardman all collide in like a try? It does. Like in the middle of the field, like the but three I, Stooges? I just saw Devontae at what Adams run into, was it Renfro? Mm-hmm. I mean, I just saw that. So yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, yeah but I mean, three I, guys. I, I, I will say, uh, you know. <laughs> This isn't. That's not an anti MVS or Juju take. I I I'm a believer in Dobbs. I really am. But um, the, the tight end, obviously, Travis Kelsey is going to be everything to the Chiefs. He always is. But I am curious. This is a. Um, it was a cameraman, not rim. Oh, oh yeah. I'm Sorry. talking about on the field. Yeah, on the field when they ran into each other. The Where, I, was, I was talking about Jason that, just that works. The, uh, you know, I did miss the joke. It was not a good joke. <laughs> well, I came from Al. Then that explains everything. <laughs> All right. Um, what's so interesting to me, the Buffalo Bills are number one against tight end. They have completely and utterly shut it down on the season. You adjust for schedule. They're number one. You can't shut down Travis Kelsey, but it is, you know, it's tough. If that's the strength of your team, um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how, how that matchup fares. Sunday Night Football, the Dallas Cowboys at 4-1 and one take on the Philadelphia Eagles, Here who are 5-0. and oh. The DraftKings Sportsbook line at home, the Eagles are six and a half point favorites. The over under is forty two. No respect for Cooper Rush. Yeah, I mean I, I get that. But all he does is win. Exactly. Respect the man. Both defenses are elite here. I am most curious to see what kind of fantasy game we get out of Jalen Hurts against the uh upper echelon traveling to Philadelphia, Dallas defense. Uh, we haven't needed to see a lot. We haven't had like a full four-quarter Jalen Hurts game this year. Uh, the over-under is just 42 points in this game. I get that. Like, I, I don't know whether I'd take the over or under. I guess I lean under in this one. You know, Cooper Rush has had success. It's going to be tough this week. This is going to be really, really telling for Jalen Hurts. Uh, if you look at the defenses he's played so far, Arizona's not the scariest defense. Jacksonville Jaguars might legitimately be the best defense they've played this year where he was the quarterback 15. The Commanders, the Vikings, and the Lions. So he's been awesome, but this is his first like true test. We know that Dallas is great. So I'm uh, all eyes are going to be on this game for me just watching – what is the real deal with the Eagles offense? I do like Dallas Goddard this week, sixth in tight end target share. I think the reason I, I went with him as the start of the week has a lot to do with the Dallas pass rush and Micah Parsons and the fact that, you know, they're going to do their best to contain Jalen Hurts in the pocket, not let him run as much as he loves to run, and his release valve, his Higby in this game is going to be Dallas Goddard Except in the he's, flat. But he's like good. You're talking about Goddard? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's like Higby, but athletic. I'm just saying. Like also, for the record, I think there's a cruise ship just outside the studio. <laughs> no I just heard it pull no up. No will hear that. No, I know. but that, I it. I'm, look, I've got a ride planned after this. <laughs> yeah, you had the cruise ship pull yeah, up? Yeah, it's very expensive to get a cruise ship to pull up in the desert. Yeah, it's definitely a cruise ship. I just heard it again. <laughs> uh, so good luck on the journey, Mike. Thank Miles you. Sanders, you going on that journey? Quietly, the RB12 on the year, 83 rushing yards a game, but yeah. Dallas shuts it down. Yeah, this this is a one or the other. So, like, Clyde against the Buffalo Bills or Miles Sanders? I would take Clyde. Yeah, as would I. Ooh, I what I'd about go, Eno? Eno. As would I. Yeah, I'd go Eno. I would. Uh, what about the running back on the other side of the field, Ezekiel Elliott? 
I would take Zeke. Man. That one is a little tougher, but I, I can do Zeke think- give. Can, here's a question for the the world: Can Zeke have a big game ever again? Yeah. Could he ever do it? Yep. We're we're executing the battle plan flawlessly. Five five fourteen nine seven. We're. Did right. I hear a 14 in there? Yeah, I'll take a 14. Um, On pace for 1,000 yards, three rushing touchdowns, and 17 receptions. Yeah, I mean, the 1,000 yards is great. The three uh, rushing touchdowns it's is... not. Well, it's not great, but it's good enough if he were to be a double-digit touchdown uh, running back, which he's not going to do against some of the matchups he's, he's been playing, including this week. But he does have that stretch Mike's been talking about. Detroit, Chicago, Green Bay, Minnesota. And he's got... Uh, Deck is coming back. Yeah. More touchdown opportunities. Well, then let me put this out there. If this plan that you're enacting, Mike, yes. that you've got the blue, I've seen the blueprints. You printed yes. them up. You've Wait, been, those were not for. Uh, yeah, I found them. Dang it. Yeah. The, well, you bought a plotter and put it in the corner of the. <laughs> and really all it says is wait till next week for Zeke. Look, if, I'm going to say this right now. If, okay. if Zeke can't deliver on your plan. Sure. It's over. For, for Zeke, the running back? Yes. I yeah probably. Uh, Tony Pollard had a monster run last week. He's always a big play away from a game, but then if you don't get that game, he's that, that play, a, he's a big play away from giving you nothing. Yeah, they call him the Taysom Hill okay. of Dallas running backs. <laughs> we're we're at that point already. Uh, maybe. I mean, who are you starting, Tony Pollard or Taysom Hill in your flex this week? That's a oh, that's really so funny. funny. That is really funny because you're talking about uh, very similar opportunities. Uh, you figure the last two weeks, Papa Josh, who are you taking? You've got Tony oh, Pollard. Don't talk to the Taysom Hill. Oh. Taysom. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll uh, take Pollard. Tony Pollard's had eight carries the last two weeks. So let's say Tony Pollard gets eight carries this week, and Taysom Hill gets eight carries this week. That that's very realistic. Yeah, Taysom probably scores on two of those eight. Right, that's so. That's crazy who you take. That's who you about. take. Start thinking of him as a running back, like a You're like a change a of pace running back. Okay, probably the best way to think about him right now. I, honestly, that makes me like him more. Okay, if, so we got to get the tight end language out of yes, the equation. It does. Yes, the let's tight put, end part. Let's, if you me. could play Tony Pollard at tight end, how much would you love Tony Pollard? Oh, now uh, we're talking. See, see yeah, <laughs> it, it made me. It made me like Taysom more to flip him if I put All Pollard right. as a tight end. Then I'm I'm finally on Team Paul. So we'll just start talking about him in the flex. <laughs> That's all we'll start talking about. Um, otherwise, CD Lamb, yeah, you you you're gonna play him, but Michael Gallup. Yes. Now, Mike, you have him as your start of the week. He went six for one twenty one and two. Do you think his time is on the way? Yeah, he's back to a full time player. His targets per route run were spectacular, and I expect that they will have to throw a little bit more in this matchup. And just in Gallup, it, Gallup's ready to go. Devontae Smith has had three bad games, one amazing game, and one pretty good game. Is Devontae Smith in an auto start category for you? He is for me. Yeah, I I, I can't imagine not. Devontae Smith or um, Olave? Ooh, if uh, Olave plays, I would go with Olave. Yeah. I think that. Garrett Wilson. Devontae, Devontae. Smith. Okay. Um, Alec Pierce, I assume, over him, too. Yep. Monday Night Football, the uh, <clears throat> Denver. Broncos Another take prime on the time. we got we got to get more more primetime Broncos yeah we do and um because they're uh, limited Los Angeles three and two the Chargers at home it seems that the NFL also thought that the Denver Broncos with Russell Wilson were going to be very fun and good. that that's a very fair point the DraftKings Sportsbook line Chargers minus four and a half at home the over under is forty five and a half and uh. Look, pretty consequential game. Chargers could go to four and two here and be up at the top of the division with the Chiefs. The Broncos would be towards the bottom with the Raiders, or it could even these teams up at three and three and keep it wide open for the wild card. It is a massively important game for these two teams in prime time. So you know that this Denver defense, which has been great, is going to be up for this game. They are going to I mean, it's a tough uh matchup for them against the Chargers offense, but I believe you're gonna get the best Broncos defense you know that they're all human beings and sometimes there's more motivation to play there's more of a chip on a shoulder that's why you have these divisional games that sometimes are just slugfests disappointing for fantasy because the defense just steps it up and they go at a hundred percent the whole time so let's respond to that Justin Herbert Austin Eckler Mike Williams Gerald Everett 
You know, he's had some good games at the tight end position, had some bad ones, including last week. Are you tempering expectations for these uh, offensive pieces? Like, would you pivot away from Herbert because of your thoughts on the Denver defense? I, d I don't think you have an option. When you've got someone like Herbert, um, even Mike Williams, who that's the guy I'm the most scared about is Mike Williams. You've got Patrick Sertain, who's been shutting guys down right now on the season. The Broncos are number one against wide receivers. So it's a tough – it's just a tough matchup. And Sertain in I, the membrane. You know <laughs> – I liked it more than I should. Um, <laughs> Herbert, you don't have another option on your team to pivot to. I, I don't. I doubt that you do with Mike Williams either. But I guess it's possible with Mike Williams. You, you that can't pivot off of Mike Williams. No, no chance. No. Wide receiver ten on the year, the no. number one target, a touchdown threat. Yeah. At home favorites. I I understand it because like well Pittman really bad game, but the the way that Mike Williams is playing and with this team, I would still put him in. Like, you're more scared because you actually have him and you're trying to math out that, that fantasy situation for your team. I'm I'm saying that there are other options. You know, look, Gabe Davis was if, – if you weren't in best ball, if you were in a home league and you had Gabe Davis and those two guys are in your last decision-making spot, I you would You would play, go Gabe Davis? I would play Gabe Davis over Mike Williams without hesitation. I think that one's close. Mike, that what do you think? They are back-to-back -back in my rankings. There you and, go. And I don't – who that, do you have higher, Gabe? Mike Williams is one spot higher as of right now. Uh, but that that I understand. Wanting to get Gabe in, get in on that 54-point game. Yeah, makes sense. This one is pretty – it's up there, though, 45 and a half points. Uh, we'll see what happens. Eckler's been amazing. Yes, he has. Uh, we have not had amazing from Josh Palmer in the absence of Keenan Allen. Uh, you know, I'd be more excited about this offense as a whole if Keenan could get back out there. But if Keenan's not out there, I think Everett, you know, is you could take a shot with yeah. Gerald Everett. Yeah, the the Broncos they shut everything down, but currently 16th against fantasy tight ends. Last week sucked, but I, I think that I think Everett is still in play. Cortland Sutton currently the wide receiver 14 on the year, averaging nine targets a game. You have to play him, right? Yes, you have to play him, do. and it's a great matchup for him. Melvin Gordon. Now Mike has him as his start of the week. <clears throat> I am very, very nervous about Melvin Gordon because of the, the just the timeshare. Because of a number of factors, I don't. I think he looks to me like he's taken a small step back from just his on the field ability. Uh, I think that this team will activate and use Latavius Murray, and I think that the injury is a concern. He has two injuries right now, including a rib injury that popped up midweek. And so I do have a little bit of a worry there where, you know, he's fumbled the ribs. Mike Boone was good in the passing game. Latavius will be active. So I'm just a little more nervous than some other folks. I mean, I know I took a little lay of the land on Melvin Gordon and the, and the sentiment was, okay, he's going to be a top 15 guy rest of the year. I don't know if I agree with that. So I guess my nerves are just a little bit, uh, you know. Sure. I, I, yeah, I don't know where I would put him rest of season, but this, this matchup, against the team that is dead last currently against fantasy running backs. I get it. You you got to put him in there. You have full confidence, Jason, in Melvin Gordon this week? And look at, I, look I have at enough, Russ. I, Russ is not good. You've got to run the ball. Yeah, I have enough confidence to start him. I do think he gets the workload, and I think the matchup is great. Uh, the question is whether or not he'll have enough scoring opportunities if Russell Wilson can just do something, just move the ball and be decent. Um, otherwise, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um Anybody else on that offense you want to uh, mess around with? The matchup is good enough where if you want to throw Jerry Judy in there, you know, you've got T. Higgins, you're worried about that, or you lost Tyler Lockett. and You know, Jerry Judy has not been great. He's been okay. He's had a couple of decent games, and this matchup is one you could throw him in there. Would you play let's, uh, Tony Pollard, flex running back or whatever, flex position, or Mike Boone? Pollard. I think I'd uh... – I think I'd play Pollard because Boone has been on the injury report as well. Okay. What about Cam Akers? No for Mike the questions Boone? at this time. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> I, I'm not, I asked you, Jason. You uh, didn't say no questions. Oh, dang it. Uh, Cam Akers. Uh, I would play Mike Boone over Cam Akers. That's I'll, the kind of. Yeah, I'll go Cam Akers. All right. Uh, Jonathan Taylor practicing again today. One more injury update for you. Waiting to see if it's limited or full, but it's a good sign that Jonathan Taylor will give it a go this weekend. I'm certainly crossing my fingers and hoping he does. Uh, a reminder, Sunday Live, one hour before kickoff. Mike will be over there at ballerslive.com. 
It's time for the face-off, and unfortunately, <clears throat> my shame again. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. You know, I, I don't like it when I see Al Borland kind of shuffling over there in the corner <laughs> of Deucer's Alley, where he's just getting – he's so excited. You can tell he's got a pep in his step. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, you, right. You, yeah, Because he knows I'm spinning the wheel. I lost to Mike by two points Yes, last week. Uh, revenge, I guess, for the uh, early matchup when I barely topped you. So I've got to spin the wheel. Jason took it home last week in a big way. He bet on his starters from his League of Record team, and they worked out. So uh, before we give you our fantasy face-off DraftKings lineups for this upcoming week six, I've got to spin it. Wheel of Shame. Well, go ahead and spin that wheel for me, Al, as you eagerly await my demise. All right, we got uh, Rainy Day. Oh, there's a Joe Dirt one. Yar Matey. What in the world? Flower Power. What in the world is landing. Cartoon Man? We're landed on the Oh, cartoon. look at that. Well, let's just say you want to pull your lineup up right now, get it nice and big so that you can uh, <laughs> see that. Okay. Without maybe <laughs> using your hands. Okay. Oh, I love the ears. So he's got some big old ears. Oh, boy. <laughs> big old ears and the big old hands. Oh, you're not using your keyboard. You're not using your keyboard. This, Listen. Uh, <laughs> this is a great uh, one. This one's pretty funny. Uh, whoever's coming up with these creative <laughs> ideas, i got to give you credit. I... um. Well, let's get into it, gentlemen. We have another week of shame on the line. I'm going to kick it off because okay. I, I haven't been kicking it off and it hasn't been working. I'm, I've got to have the uh, three-game streak now. Yeah. That's got to be a record. Um, I'm going with Josh Allen as my quarterback in I'm this matchup. I'm going with Josh Allen as my I'm quarterback. I'm going with Josh Allen. Okay. I am worried that we are going to have the exact same lineups. I just feel like it's so obvious right now, but – we all yeah. have Josh Allen, so that's going to wash out. And he's going to score a million points. There's a lot of chalky plays this well, week. Well, let's see if it happens again here. Uh, okay. My running backs, my starting two. Okay. Saquon Barkley at 7,700. Okay. Eno Benjamin at 4,600 this week. I have Eno Benjamin in my flex. That 4,600 price tag is too good to not uh, take advantage of. He is the highest odds on. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook to score a touchdown. Minus one to score a touchdown this week, so he's in there. My, uh, I'll, I'll just give you my other running backs uh, as well as my flex. Since we're on running backs, I've got Ramondre Stevenson. Cannot fathom that we don't all have Ramondre Stevenson at 6,000. Okay. No. Oh, wow. Andy's, well, I guess as my start of the week, Ramondre yeah. Stevenson. And I have Brees Hall at 5,800. So uh, three running backs that are 6,000 or less on my roster. Mike? So, uh, Eno Benjamin is my flex player as well. At so, we've all got Eno. Yes. So, but that my starting two running backs, uh, Ramondre Stevenson at 6,000, but then I have Kenneth Walker mm. at 5,400 taking on the Arizona Cardinals at home. His line on DraftKings Sportsbook so right we, now, 80 and a half rushing yards. We all went flex running back then. Yes. Uh, I have Kenneth Walker as well. Okay. And so your flex? I, I'm the only one with Saquon? You, you are, are the only one with Saquon. Yep. Interesting. All right, let's uh, let's dish out the wide receivers in the tight end position. I guess I'll just finish the lineup out. How about that? Sure. My wide receivers, Stephon Diggs. Okay. With the Josh Allen uh, stack in the highest over under of the week. And then my other two wideouts. I went with Chris Godwin against Pittsburgh okay. at 6,100. And I went with, uh, this was a bargain here, and uh, Tyler Lockett not being in this lineup kind of messed this up. Mm -hmm. But I went with Darius Slayton at 3,800. Interesting. For the Giants as my bargain play. He was good last week. Baltimore is not a great defense right now. Uh, my tight end, I went with Noah Fant at 3,000. I needed a bargain there. Okay. Uh, I pivoted from KDOT into Noah Fant. Seattle, Lockett having uh, some issues and that being a high over-under. And then on defense, I had to go – basement dwelling with the expensive digs in Godwin. So I went with the New Orleans Saints against Cincinnati. Cincinnati might not have T. Higgins. Sure. New Orleans at home. 
2,800. Joe Burrow likes to take a sack or two yeah. a game. I, I, I only have four fingers or three fingers and a thumb, guys. Because you're a cartoon man. Yeah, you're yeah. a cartoon man. You're not even like a real person. Um, Cartoons uh, can't be bothered to draw in the fifth digit. We have very, very similar wide receivers. Andy, I have Stephon Diggs and Chris Godwin. Oh, boy. And just like you had, I had Tyler Lockett. I had to pivot off, and I went to Chris Olave. Yeah. Now, He's in my lineup. Should Chris Olave not clear what concussion? His, what's his price? Chris Olave is fifty five hundred. Oh. Yeah, it's not. I think a, th a hundred less than what Lockett was at. Yes. Um, should he not clear concussion protocol, I will be switching to Christian Kirk. I have four hundred uh, remaining dollars on my salary, so I can move up to him. Um, at tight end, I as well pivoted off of uh, Kate Otten. Kate Otten and went with Zach Gentry. For the Pittsburgh Steelers against that Tampa Bay matchup, he was only twenty six hundred, and I went nice. bottom of the barrel. The did cheapest. You, did defense. you go with me? I'm with the Panthers yeah, against baby. the Rams. I'm gonna get all them sacopotamuses. All right, so uh, these lineups are very chalky, chalky, chalky. Stephon Diggs, Chris Godwin are in my lineup. Come on, <laughs> because look, the price is just one. You got to get the Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs stack. So we are just there's. Chris Godwin is still underpriced at 6100 but so here's where we differentiate. I do have the Carolina Panthers because they're the lowest priced defense and I look the, the Matthew Stafford is playing terrible and that offensive line is good that they're so going you want to Higby? They're going no, they're going to give up sacks. So my third wide receiver I went another player in that Kansas City matchup. I went with MVS at 4500 mm. Just to see if we can get a little bit of magic, and then my tight end because I still had some cash. I went David and Joku, nice at four thousand. All nice. right, well, I mean, you know, Allen, Diggs, Godwin, uh, and Eno are in all of our lineups, right? Yeah, yeah. and there isn't, there's nobody else that is in all three. Nobody else in all three. But Ramondre then a bunch Stevenson, of duplications. The Panthers yeah. uh, have uh, Kenneth couple. Walker for me and Mike. Mm -hmm. and, yep. Okay. All right. Um, so I can't. This, I can't use my mouse pad. <laughs> what do you? Why you, don't you close our segment, Mike? Would uh, you I mind? Will. Yes, I will. That was Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code Ballers to get two hundred dollars in free bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game. <laughs> That's code Ballers only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Andy using the massive gloved hands to dr take a drink was a delight. <laughs> um. A reminder, join Mike on uh, yes, ballerslive.com Sunday morning. Uh, go ahead and do that. Make sure you <laughs> subscribe, and we'll say goodbye, everybody. Have a good weekend, everyone. I'll see you on Sunday morning. Let's get a W. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.